Welcome back to yet another episode of my Tesla Robo Taxi video series. This is episode 10, where we get picked up at Terry Black's and end up being dropped off at Uncommon Objects. This is about a four and a half mile ride, and it took us about 14 minutes total for the trip. So as I mentioned in the last episode, Terry Black's parking lot is probably one of the harder areas for a taxi service to operate, mainly because it's small and there's a lot of vehicle traffic and a lot of pedestrians and a lot of bad human drivers in general. Um, exiting is usually one of the easier maneuvers though. However, as I'll mention here in a sec, there's actually a car to our left here illegally parked in the bike lane and that prevents our vehicle from seeing traffic to the left. So you'll see the car select reverse here to kind of go back into the parking lot because we do have space behind us and that allows it to see because it's, it's a little bit of a downhill entrance here. So by reversing, we can go up a little bit, see beyond that car, and then the car picks drive again now that it can see because that car actually moved out of the way since we went in reverse and so forth. Um, and now we're essentially going to wait. Now, the Waymo coming in here in front of us is actually going to make our lives worse because he is now blocking traffic in that entire lane in front of us um, to drop people off. Again, I don't like this behavior. Waymo seem to do it when they come from that direction. They will always drop off and block that lane. They will not turn right into the parking lot. I cannot understand why. Tesla RoboTaxi does it. It does unprotected left turns as well. The RoboTaxi will only make a left turn into that parking lot. It will never make a right turn. I can't explain that logic, but... Um, that truck now moved out of the way and we should have an opening here and now you can see the car is proceeding and actually navigating around the Waymo. So it actually went to that left lane as it made that maneuver. Um, to me that's a pretty advanced move and the car pulled it off flawlessly. So a lot of variables that you could see there that the car had to handle and it did so without, you know, again, going between brake and throttle and being jerky and making a bunch of erratic wheel movements. It did that about as camp confidently as you'd hope for. So good stuff there. So you'll notice a guy walking his dog here on the right, and there's actually another pedestrian up here on the right, uh, looks to be on a scooter. In both situations here, RoboTaxi does a great job of not adjusting the speed. It confidently knows their planned trajectories and doesn't, you know, hit the brakes suddenly or whatever. I do not see that behavior with Waymos. They'll usually like go between brake and throttle, brake and throttle when they come up upon, you know, VRUs like that. And again, a VRU is a vulnerable road user. You'll also notice coming up to this intersection here, a human driver timed the left turn relatively late, but you'll notice that uh, FSD only adjusted the speed by a couple miles per hour and it did so over a longer distance there. So it wasn't a jarring input for us. We barely even noticed it, um, but it slowed up enough to make sure that we would not come into contact with that vehicle and, and again, reacted accordingly.
So we approach a tight curve here, and it's made tighter by the fact there's a bike lane immediately to our right, and the center lane markings are actually really close. But you can tell by the speed on the uh, display that FSD handles it comfortably, doesn't jam on the brakes or do anything stupid. So good stuff there. And this road just continues to be tighter. We saw the speed bump there that FSD react to, but also um, because of the bike lane and the speed reduction zones there, uh, we have to kind of zigzag through those and it's a very tight squeeze. FST does a great job of navigating this area. Again, not excessively slowing up or any of that. And then again, we'll come across the speed bump here and recognize that, slow down appropriately and proceed. <music> And much like some of the previous streets, because of park traffic, this road becomes a bit more narrow than it should. FSD does a great job of passing the parked vehicles and then going right back to the right when able to do so. So again, great behavior. So what FSD should be doing. And for the most part, it pretty much does this exactly like it does with version 13 that's publicly available today. <laughs> So we're getting close to the end of the drive here. Uh, we have one left turn to make, which the car does successfully. And then you'll notice then there's a dirt parking lot to our right. And there is a space, even though there's cars parked there, for us to pull up, get out of the lane of traffic, and then drop my wife and I off. Um, you'll notice then throughout this drive, there haven't been any hesitations or interventions. Um, Terry Black's parking lot was probably the busiest I've seen in a little bit. And yet the car even though it had a lot of curveballs thrown at it, handled it, everything in stride. So great stuff there. Um, hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you on the next one.